Okay, we're gonna start fresh. Oh, map. You can name it whatever you want. I'm gonna make my maps kind of big because I don't like small maps. Just personal preference. It's up to you. Whatever you like. Whoa. What happened here? Now, first thing I want to do is turn off the fog because it's annoying. You can't see what you're doing. And you want to toggle show playable area. Okay, this is recording. Now we can start placing our base starting points. So we go on EBPS. Well, first of all, you click on the object placement pin, which is right here. EBPS, um, gameplay. And you should have. Where is it? Starting position, share territory. So one here, you know, player one, player two. Move it up a little bit. Now you want to have. Um, so now you want to have a um, starting territory team. Now this, what this does is it gives you your team. You know, players one and two could be on the same team or whatever, but it gives your team the room to build their base. So this point. Even though it looks like you can capture it, you can't. You won't be able to see this point on the map. You will be able to see, um, for example, territory munitions points. If you put these on, you'll be able to see. But these points are just so that you have some territory so, for you to build your base, for you and your teammates to, on the, your team to build your base on. So that's what that's for. Okay, so you can set this one to player one. Set this thing to player two. Whatever, right? So on the other side of the map, same thing, you know. Um, oh yeah, hang on, we're not done with the side. So well, now that we have the starting positions, we also need to put in, um, you know, the entry points. Because if you don't have entry points, then if you call in any units, you don't really have anywhere for them to come in. So now I gotta look for that entry. Okay. Map entry point. Um, I'm not sure. I'm just gonna go with player. If it's not this one, then this is probably the one on top. But there's one here, and then there's one here, and I'm gonna assign this one to player one. Assign the second one to player two. Just like that. Okay, um, if you want, you can even rotate this. You just hold shift and you can rotate it the right direction or whatever. It's all up to you. Okay, now this, yeah, again, this just defines the map entry points, defines where the units come into the map when you buy new units. So that's player one, player two, player one, player two. So now let's go on the other side and give in the opposition, um, or give the opposition a few, you know, the same thing. So now we will give them, it's almost the same exact thing except they're going to be players, you know, First of all, let's make the starting position. So let's just say this is going to be player three. This is going to be player four. Again, they need a, a position, I mean, um, some territory where they can build their base because if you don't give them that, they won't be able to build anything. Starting territory team. And this you will just basically change it to the beginning of the second team. So team two would be three and four. So you would set this to three. The beginning of team one would be players one and two. So we set this one to player one. Okay. So once you do that, you basically have the territories for the um, you have the territories set for the two teams. So again, like the like the like the thing we did with the other one, we need some entry points. One here, one here. This one's going to be player three. This one is going to be player four. Okay. Once we set that, these guys are pretty much set. Um, if you don't have these elements, um, I don't. You won't even be able to save the map. 
So let's see if we can try to see the map now. I'm not sure if this is complete. But, um, please create a sector. Okay. So all this is saying is we haven't. Um, we need to go into territory. I guess calculate this. So. What this does is we only have these two. Um, what this does is it shows you the the territory that which it represents. What this thing represents is all this blue was created by this. So because we didn't put any other points on the map, it's only two, and basically it could, this basically means it could build its base anywhere on, you know on the blue on t team um, one, which is players one and two can build their base on this entire half of the map. And same thing goes for the other side, vice versa. So they can build on the entire half. So what we need to do is we need to put in more. Um, we need to put in more. Pretty much, okay. Let's just in order to get okay. So, so to get rid of this view, just toggle the overlay and then it goes away. So to fix that, we we throw in um, some uh, territory points or. So you can either put in munitions, um, I mean fuel, or munitions, or the regular just territory, but yeah. So let's just get that started. So here's a uh, here's a munitions I just put down. Here is the fuel I'll put down on this side of the map. Pretty basic, right? And then territory point, and then in the middle we can have just a regular territory point, or you know we can even make it a little bit more interesting. We can put Two, one over there, one over here, and yeah, and then like when you when you build them up, you can put in an obstacle and stuff. But we're just going with a very basic term. and I might even give them a little bit more. Um... Oh wait, this is the one. Okay, when you're doing multiplayer, you should always use the one with the MP on it. I think it's safer if you do it that way. Um, I think these two middle ones were. This territory point, so one and two. It's the same. I just replaced the regular territory with the territory plan MP, uh, and I guess we can put a few lower ones. Um, you know, just so these players can have some fun capturing these points. Now, this is very basic because we haven't put anything. You know, we don't even have textures or anything or any obstacles in the game. You know, no cover, no nothing, no buildings. So we just have these territory points. And we do the same thing to set their. Um, see, right now when we click back on territory, it's just the other two. So now, if you want to put these in in the game, you have to click on calculate again. And see what this does? It separates the game into the into the basically the the territories you know you know in the regular game. So voila, right? If you don't like the way it is, you can all, you can you, know, you can you can paint it or you can do whatever you want. So like, you can probably sample this. And you know, start drawing into the other one. So you can you can customize the territories to your liking. So you can yeah, you can you can even cut into the other territories like that or whatever. Now if you know, I'm gonna go back to the or, or to the computer generator one. You can just recalculate this and boom, it's all fixed. It goes back to whatever the calculations are. So so now you can see that teams one and two can only build their base you know in this part of the map, and then to get control of these, they have to capture them, capture these you know. That you, it's pretty, you know. There's a working game right here. There's nothing in here, you know. There's no buildings, no customized, you know, no cover, no nothing. It's just a flat map. But that, but this you can actually play. So let's get up, get off this mode. Okay, we'll just change this. So now you can you can hit save. Okay, this is player one has to start position the nine eleven. Okay. I, I, let me see what's going on here. So I think I used the wrong one. This is player one. This, this is player one. Maybe. Okay. So I'm going to replace these with the ones when I said I wasn't really sure which one to use. Um, map entry point. I'm just going to use a regular map entry point. I use a, a one where it says player, but I'm just going to use this one. Um, you know, turn these around, whatever. Turn these back around. Okay. 
So this back to player one. Okay, that's player one. So this is player two. That's player two. Do the same thing for the other one because I think the other ones are bug too. Okay. So this is player three, which is correct. This is player four. So now they it now it should work. Well, wow, that's insane. Voila, the map saved. So now, okay. So basically, if you go in your game, you can't really play yet. But I'm just gonna give it some. You know, uh, this is only. I'm just gonna call this map title example map. Do not uh, example. Plain playable map. Okay, save. Okay, so okay, so now you can't. You, I mean, um, what we've done so far, you can't. You won't be able to see it in your game. Okay, what happened? I zoomed it too much. You won't be able to see it in, in your game yet. The final step is to ex. Okay. Final step is to export your package. So now that you've done this, um, when you launch your game, you should be able to see it. Given that you've you've um, saved it in in your in your Steam in your, in the right directory. So it's Steam apps common um, <coughs> company payrolls, uh, coh2 data scenarios in the, in that folder in your Steam folder. If you don't do it in your Steam's um, Company Heroes folder, if you put it in your documents, your thing is screwed, okay? Don't put it in your documents. If you put it in your documents, you won't be able to see your map. That's it. So basically now, this is our map right here. This is it. So this is how you get a functional map. Now in the next video, I'm going to start going over style and everything. But if you wanted to learn how to do a functional map, just a simple functional map, just to get started, this is it right here. You have all your points, you have the starting position, you're done. Um, oh, actually, one more step. Uh, my mistake. Um, you have to set up your teams. If you don't set up your teams correctly, um, I think if you don't set up your teams correctly, let's see if this is the right one. You have to go 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 1. One one two two, one one two two. If you don't do that, um, you have to do that so that I, I'm not. I can't even explain why you have to do that, but I'll just explain it. If you don't do that, if you set, um, you know, you want this side to be team one. If you set players one and two, you want one and two to be here and here. Now, if you didn't do what I just did, changing the ones and the twos, you might end up with player one over here and player two over there and player three and player four. The game is just dumb like that. Um, I guess this is just a bug, but you have to do this. Now, now if you had like a 3 versus 3, then it would be 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3. 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, like that. Um, this is just the way you, you need to make it for this thing to work, right? Let's save again. Um, I always save just because I think I made something, I don't mistake or something. Um, an export package. And you should be able to see it in your in your maps. That's how you make a functional map. I'm going to go over styling in the next video.